Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the King, and welcome back to the channel. Guys, the new DLC for Dead by Daylight has just dropped. Keep in mind, this is for PC only for the PTB, so only players on PC are able to play this. Those of you that are on console will have to sadly wait another two weeks until this is fully released to the public. So in this video, what I'm going to do is something I've never actually done before. I'm going to break down everything about this killer, the power, the mori, the map, everything that I can in one video. Normally, I split these videos into multiple pieces, where I showed a Mori in one of them, and then I showed a Power in one of them, and I do the breakdown and analysis, but I thought I'll just combine it all into one big video for you guys. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump straight on into this. Make sure you guys do leave a like if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you are brand new to the channel for some more Dead by Daylight content. Follow my social medias and join our Discord. Link is in the description. Anyways, here is your no-nonsense video about what's coming into Dead by Daylight. So to start off, the new killer is the Legion. If you guys are wondering about the teaser that we actually got with a different mask, that's actually a different version of the killer. So there's a male and female version of the killer. Two of those masks are not actually in the game just yet. We're not sure how you acquire them or if it's going to be DLC or something like that. I did mention this could only be cosmetics, and it is only cosmetics. Anyways, the killer's power is called Feral Frenzy. This is an activatable power that needs to recharge every time you use it and when you actually use this you sprint a little bit faster than your normal speed you can also vault pallets survivors during this time will not leave scratch marks so you won't see any scratch marks and if you actually miss an attack during this it is reduced so while you are in frenzy mode if you hit a survivor there's a new effect called deep wound status effect if you hit a person that doesn't have it, they will automatically get this deep wound status effect. This will also injure a survivor if they're not already injured. And hitting someone while you're in this and you're in this frenzy mode will actually refill your entire power gate. So hitting someone multiple times will actually continuously recharge this. This triggers the killer's instinct, revealing the locations of all survivors who do not have deep wound status effect applied to them within the killer's terror radius. Meaning, if you're in this, you will actually see other players that are not in this deep wound status effect. So while this is also activated, hitting a survivor who is currently affected with the deep wound status effect reduces a portion of the survivor's deep wound bleed out timer. So if you actually hit someone and they have this deep wound status effect, what happens is they have a bar like borrow time and that progressively goes down when you're not in chase. Hitting them multiple times will actually make that bar reduce until you actually knock them to the ground. So that's the killer's power wrapped up nicely. It's pretty simple. Basically, you go into frenzy mode and you stab people a whole bunch, give them the deep wound status effect, and you can vault pallets, so it's pretty cool. Now, the killer moves at 110 movement speed and is at 115 when you actually activate this feral frenzy. It's a very nice power to have, and after you're done, you have a little cooldown like the nurse. So when your power runs out, you have a little debuff, a little recharge time, so survivors can get a little bit of an upper hand on you there. Everything besides that about this killer is pretty standard. The map is the new ski resort, as you can see in the gameplay, it's a snowy map, it's very nice. There's a lot of locations that are good for exploring, there's also a big centerpiece with like a log cabin. There's a watchtower on one of the hills, which is very nice. And the survivor for this chapter is Jeff, as I spoke about in my last video, if you haven't seen it, I recommend going and watching it now. Besides that, everything is self-explanatory, I'm going to show you guys the Mori at the end, so there's no spoilers in case you really don't want to see the Mori. It's going to be at the end of the gameplay, but that's pretty much it, I'm going to let the gameplay go ahead and play so you guys can understand how this killer works. I didn't do the best in this game, we were just having some fun and kill your friends. I was just trying to figure out the killer myself, this was my first time playing it. It's really rough when you're in that mode and you're running around in frenzy because the speed boost catches you off guard and I'm sure if you have a perk like Shadowborn or monitor and abuse and it affects your vision, it's gonna be even more chaotic. But once you hit someone, especially with save the best for last and like the speed perks that I were using, it gets a little bit intense. But with some playtime, everyone's gonna understand him and then we can list him on the top tier of like where he fits in all the killers. Is he gonna be top tier? Is he gonna be bottom tier? We don't know just yet. We have to play a little bit more. As of now, first impressions are very nice. I do like this killer. I like the concept of vaulting over pallets. It's really nice. It helps you in chases, especially for those people that pallet loop so this is a nice addition to the game but that pretty much does it i hope you guys did enjoy have fun watching the rest of the gameplay and i'll see you guys in the fog take care guys and let me know what you guys think about this killer see you soon
要说。